After our last four videos on Mary Sue's, there is still one important question that we have left dangling. Is Sand a Mary Sue? A Mary Sue is an overpowered and perfectly good character, with no explanation given for that power level. A Mary Sue is typically instantly liked by all of the established characters. Yet at the same time, a Mary Sue doesn't have much of an actual personality. Since the other characters have no apparent reason to like them so much, Mary Sues feel like a wish-fulfillment fantasy, more than they feel like actual characters in the story. Finally, being perfectly good and overpowered, typical Mary Sues are also never embarrassed and never fail in important ways, which is one reason why Mary Sues are typically considered bad screenwriting. So let's find out if Sand is a Mary Sue. First, Sand is not exactly overpowered, but nonetheless, Sand's power level is pretty ribbed. For example, the inhabitants on Tatooine all have to adapt to Sand in different ways, from wearing Bedouin cloaks to farming moisture. Nonetheless, even though Sand is pretty powerful, we can't necessarily say that Sand is overpowered, because the inhabitants do manage to adapt to Sand and get their way. Likewise, on Jakku, we see Rey wanting to return from a scavenger hunt, but Sand being in her way. Here, she manages to use her equipment as a sledge to traverse the sand with no trouble. So Sand is clearly less powerful than Rey, for example. And even though BB-8 moves by way of spinning his body, which is one big ball, BB-8 still manages to negotiate Sand with no trouble. So BB-8 is also more powerful than Sand, or at least as powerful. So while Sand is powerful, Sand isn't necessarily overpowered. Liar! No! You're with him! Next, we'll look at whether Sand has an unexplained power level. Watching the movies, we're told that Sand is very dangerous, but no explanation is provided as to why Sand is so dangerous. It's as if the movies just want us to accept that Sand is dangerous, without bothering to spell out why we should believe that. Just like the new movies try to browbeat viewers into accepting that Rey is insanely powerful, because she just is. But smart people aren't falling for it. Smart people watch the movies and conclude that Sand has an unexplained power level. Storms are very, very dangerous. Then there is the question of whether Sand is perfectly good. At first glance, we might be tempted to conclude that Sand is true neutral in the D&D alignment system. That is how Sand is presented in most of the movies. But if you listen carefully, you can hear that the other characters consider Sand to be moody and malicious, like an irritable spirit who is sometimes acting out. A deeper analysis will therefore reveal that Sand is not true neutral, but neutral evil. According to the D&D dictionary, a neutral evil character does whatever he can get away with. He's out for himself, pure and simple. And he sheds no tears for those he kills, and doesn't see the point in following man-made laws. That does sound an awful lot like Sand in Star Wars. So not only is Sand not perfectly good, Sand is actually evil. Brought him here to kill me. No. We also need to look into whether Sand has a personality. Now, in spite of what I just said about Sand seeming irritable, it's not easy to determine whether Sand really is irritable, or if it's just something that other characters are imagining about Sand. That wouldn't be a first for Star Wars. For example, the other characters also imagine that Palpatine wants what's best for the Republic, until it's revealed that he really wants to topple it and replace it with the First Galactic Empire. So the other characters could be wrong about Sand. It would therefore be wise to dig a bit deeper into how Sand is presented on its own terms. Here it is clear that Sand is a pretty underdeveloped character. Even though Sand is featured in many of the movies, we don't hear or see a lot about Sand's personality. Also, Sand doesn't really have a character arc. Sand is just kind of Sand all the way through. A more careful analysis that the one that immediately jumps out to the viewer will therefore reveal that Sand doesn't have a personality. What about being instantly liked? Here, comparing Sand to the other characters, we see that Sand gets kind of a rough deal in the lineup. Sand isn't promoted to Senator or General, the way Jar Jar is, and Sand isn't hugged by Leia or Chewie, nor does Han offer Sand a job at any point. In fact, 
not only do some of the supporting characters cynically ignore Sand, one pretty important character doesn't even like Sand at all, and in fact, trashes Sand behind its back. I don't like Sand. Does Sand feel like a wish fulfillment fantasy then? A wish fulfillment is like a daydream, where the typical frustrations of life are turned on their head. Someone who is not very beautiful, rich, powerful, or well liked experiences a fantasy where they have all of these qualities in abundance. As we have seen, Sand does possess some of these qualities, such as being powerful, but the qualities are not fleshed out in an over the top manner that feels like wish fulfillment. Sand's qualities are kind of understated, which counts against Sand feeling like wish fulfillment. Also, by wide agreement, the new movies espouse a radical feminist and progressive worldview, and as been suggested to me by the Awe Cabinet, Sand can easily be seen as a metaphor for how feminists view the patriarchy since Sand is rough, coarse, irritating, and gets everywhere. In other words, Sand needs to check its privilege and stop its Sand spreading. Finally, we must look at whether Sand fails or is embarrassed in important ways. Of course, Anakin talks smack about Sand, but Sand isn't there to hear it, so we cannot know how Sand would have reacted, or whether Sand would have been embarrassed. We can see that Sand tries to get in the way of other characters at times, and one could argue that Sand doesn't succeed in besting them. But at the same time, we cannot say how badly Sand is dented from losing these tests of strength. It seems like Sand just shrugs off these defeats. Furthermore, Sand doesn't have an arm or leg cut off, and Sand doesn't step in poop or get smacked in the ass by R2-D2. A fair analysis must therefore conclude that Sand isn't embarrassed and does not fail in important ways. Thus tallying up the final score, Sand gets 3 out of 7 on the Mary Sue Index. One point for having an unexplained power level, one for having no personality, and one for not being embarrassed or failing. That leaves Sand's final score at 42.8%, which is well ahead of Luke and Anakin, a bit below Jar Jar, and nowhere near as Mary Sue-ish as Rey. And that is why Sand is not really a Mary Sue. Hey guys, I just wanted to do a shout out since I got my first YouTube Patreon since the last video. Of course, there is no pressure to support the channel, but thanks man, I appreciate it. I don't really know how to use Patreon yet, so if any of you out there have any ideas of what to do, I'm all ears. I'm willing to put patrons in the on-screen credits and share the writing scripts like I see other channels doing, but are people really interested in that kind of thing? Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments.